everybody, and welcome to AutoCAD 3D Lectures with your instructor, Elia Gindis. We'll be covering all of AutoCAD 3D, which corresponds to chapters 21 through 30 of my textbook, Up and Running with AutoCAD 2014. Each chapter will be broken down into two or three video lessons. Each will be about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on content. Now, although we're covering AutoCAD 2014, which is what you see in front of you, a lot of what you learn can be applied to AutoCAD 2013, 2012, and even 2011, as AutoCAD did not change very radically between these releases. Now, to get the most out of these lessons, go through each one, pause to take notes, and then uh, practice on your own with your own AutoCAD, and that's really the key, constant practice. If you have any issues or questions, you can email me at elliot.gindis at gmail.com alright well let's get started first thing we need to do is to talk about the environment around us and you can see there's a ribbon up on the screen there's also a few toolbars and we also have access to cascading menus and typing these four methods are ones I present whether it's 2D or 3D and students can feel free to choose whichever method they're most comfortable with or use a hybrid of several methods the three toolbars that I have up here are called 3D Navigation, View, and Visual Styles. So if you don't have them up, take a moment to bring them up on your screen and dock them here at the top. Also note the environment up here says 3D Modeling. That basically changes your ribbon to include a lot of 3D tools. Make sure that's selected if it is not. And you will notice the ribbon has a great deal of 3D and some 2D tools mixed in. Also be sure to have the menu at the top where we can access the cascading commands. And if you don't have it up, there's a button here which you can click down. It will sh say hide or show the menu. And of course we always have our command line at the bottom, which is the fourth and very common way to input information to AutoCAD. One final thing to notice, I'm going to right click anywhere on the screen and select options dot 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 and an options dialog box will come up and I want to turn your attention to the 3D modeling tab right here and to make sure that the z-axis and crosshairs is not checked like this it is a lot easier to tell where you are in 3D space if you only have two axes and finally and this is more of a personal preference I like my crosshair size to be 100% because I feel it's a lot easier to tell where you are in space when they stretch all the way across the screen but that is a personal preference when you're done let's hit OK and there's a layout that you should have in front of you as well so take a moment to pause if need be and set it up the way you like it alright let's get started with 3D then so what exactly does drawing in 3D mean? Well, it's the ability to give depth to objects or to expand them into the third dimension from a flat plane. This concept should be intuitively obvious. After all, we live in a 3D world, so everything has not just a length and a width, but also a depth or a height. It turns out as you were using AutoCAD in 2D, you were really in 3D all along. It's just that you did not see or use this vertical third dimension. Therefore, everything appeared flat, similar to not seeing the height of a tall building if you're flying directly above it. All this changes now as we discuss this hidden dimension and learn how to project into it. For this we need to start at the very beginning and learn about axes, planes, and faces. So concept one, let me bring up the graphic for it. There exists in the Cartesian coordinate system a total of three axes, X, Y, and Z as seen here. These axes intersect each other at the zero, zero, zero point and by definition could be positive or negative as represented by solid and dashed lines in the figure on the right. Concept 2. A plane is defined as, in, as the intersection of two axes. Therefore the X, Y, and Z axes can define three unique planes. The XY, YZ, and the ZX planes as seen right here. Concept 3. A total of six faces of an imaginary cube can then be formed using these three planes. This can be easily seen if we move the planes out and connect them edge to edge, as seen here. For our purposes right now, planes and faces are really the same thing, and we will refer only to planes from here on forth. 
Make sure you completely understand the preceding discussion. Everything else will be based off of this. All right, the next topic to discuss is entering and exiting 3D. So let me go ahead and erase these graphics. And let's talk about how to enter and exit 3D. The key to starting out learning 3D is to get into 3 mode and reveal the third axis. The gateway to entering 3D is any of the isometric views, though we tend to use the southwest isometric view most often. And the way to exit 3D is any of the flat views, such as front, back, left, right, although we use the top view most often. Let's give this a try using the view toolbar, which is right here. And this button right here is the southwest isometric. As soon as I click it, notice what happens. The crosshairs and the UCS icon have tilted to reveal the z-axis which is right here. To get back out of 3D you press the top view which is the very first one and you get back to the familiar X and Y view and there's the z-axis hidden not seen. So it's very important this is how you get in and out of 3D. Now you can also of course use cascading menus for this under view 3D views and there they are and you can also use the uh, ribbon under view and there they are right there okay let's go into 3D and let's try to draw something I'm gonna draw a rectangle using basic rectangle command and I'm gonna make this rectangle 10 by 6 just a random size and there it is now here we come to sort of a roadblock. Say you'd like to draw four sides and, and the top to create a full 3D box. How do you do this? Although you're in 3D, you have no way yet of actually projecting objects into the third dimension. That's the subject of the next section, projecting into 3D. Your input device, a mouse these days of course, is by its nature a 2D device. It works by going forwards and back and left and right on your desk or mouse pad, but not straight up. This is obviously a bit of a problem for projecting and drawing into the third dimension. Designers of software years ago noticed this, of course, and came up with a simple and elegant solution that was integrated into all types of software packages, including AutoCAD. When you go into 3D, instead of raising your mouse into the air, you simply switch from a flat plane to a vertical plane. The effect is immediate. You can now draw up relative to you, the observer. To go back, you, of course, just switch the planes back to this one right here the flat plane. You already did a little bit of this when learning isometric. You pressed F5 and you cycle through three planes, top, left, and right. We're going to do something similar here. So how do you actually do this? Well, rotating planes is equivalent to rotating the UCS icon. The easiest way to do it is by typing. The UCS command, you press enter, allows you to select, among many other things here, the X, Y, or Z axis about which you'd like to rotate. Now there's something very important here. You need to pick the correct axes. Is it the X, Y, or Z? Now if you rotate about the Z axis, that's not really not going to help you. It's uh, sort of like the helicopter blade spinning. It will spin about its own plane. We need to rotate around a different axis in order to draw up. So in this case we have the X or the Y is the correct choice. So I'm going to type in X, press enter, and notice what happened. The UCS icon and the crosshairs are not pointing up. Now how much to rotate? Well 90 degrees is acceptable. Hit enter and there it is. You are now able to draw straight up along the Y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and do that using ortho and o snap. I'm going to draw a line straight up. Then use the copy command to copy here, 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 and here. And copy the bottom to create the top. And there it is, your first 3D box. Okay, you can also, of course, do these UCS rotations via the ribbon, which is right here. X, Y, and Z, not just the toolbar. All right, there's one more topic to cover for the first lesson, and it's another extremely important one called dynamic views. 
In 3D, you need to constantly spin the object around to get a good look at it from all sides. AutoCAD is a powerful 3D orbit tool to easily look at your design in real time as opposed to just preset views. Remember though, even though we say we are rotating the object, really we're not. We are rotating our view of the object. 3D orbit is right here. It's called a free orbit. And as soon as you press it, a green circle comes up, and you're able to hold and click the mouse and then move the mouse and you can rotate your view around the object in pretty much any direction you'd like. When you're done just hit escape and you can see that your object is now rotated to whatever view you selected. If you'd like to go back to your preset views just simply select the southwest asymmetric just like we did earlier and it goes right back. Now there's another version of this command called a continuous orbit which allows you to click and drag the mouse and when you let go the object will rotate on its own. Now this is useful for presentations and has somewhat of an entertainment value but not as useful as the other one where you can manually select exactly where you want it to go. Once again hit escape when you're done and the object will assume the position of the new uh, rotation angle that you selected. When done you can always go back to the presets. Okay, so we learned three very important concepts, just to quickly recap. We learned how to uh, go into 3D, how to come out of 3D using Southwest Asymmetric or really any of the other views or the top view to get back. We learned how to rotate the UCS icon around the X. You can also do it on the Y and the Z axis, just select whichever one you want. And you can rotate it at various degree amounts, not just 90 degrees. 90 is the most convenient for us right now. And finally, we learn how to do a 3D orbit, either continuous or a free orbit. And this will allow you to look at your design from all different types of angles. Okay, there's three extremely important concepts that we need right now to, uh, to go on. So be sure to review everything and uh, practice. And I will see you in lesson number two in just a few minutes. Thanks. Bye -bye.